welcome. So uh, uh, Katrina asked me to do a, a, a presentation on fish breeding, and I didn't know. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of different levels of knowledge about how fish are bred in captivity, and uh, so this is, might be a little bit towards the, the lower end than people with some experience, but you know, it's a start, I think. So um, these ought to look very, very familiar to Katrina because they are her fish. <laughs> come on, come on, Wi-Fi. You can do it. There we go. Okay. So now these are currently in the possession of uh, Daniel Walden, who can't be here today. He uh, uh, lives up near Lafayette, and um, he is, he and I are the only two that I know of in the club that are breeding fish. And. Um, he has two pair. He has this pair and then a yeah. pair of onyx he got from uh, Cat Doc, if I didn't know her. Um, and um, these fish, uh, I think he said, are on a very regular 12-day schedule. Every 12 days, there's a new nest. Um, you can see what he's done here. This is what a lot of breeders will do. They will prop up a piece of tile to make like almost a little tent. And the fish will spawn on the upper side of right here of the of the tile. And um, a mature pair will make a pretty sizable nest, depending on the species. The number of eggs will change or whatever. Um, but um, they'll make an, a, a, an established pair will make a very nice tight nest, very close together, and it's almost always like a circular or oval. Um, and I'll, later on, I'll like, show you some pictures of it. But, um, this is the behavior that they, they circle. Uh, the female will lay the eggs, and then the male will, they almost like, it's almost like dancing. They'll, she'll do a circle, and she'll get out of the way, and he'll do a circle and fertilize it. And then she'll do a circle, and then he does a circle. It's sort of back and forth. And it'll, um, I mean, this movie is, uh, I think, uh, nine minutes long. Uh, but uh, some, depending on the size of the nest, it might take an hour or more. Um, and so this is, this is a, if you ever see this sort of behavior in your tank, this is what's going on. Yeah. Every 12 days, is that? Yeah, every 12 days. Um, that set tends to be, some people say they can get their fish on a 10 day schedule. Minor on 10. But um, that, I, I think um, people aim for 12. <coughs> I mean, if you get to 10, you're doing really well, but most people aim for 12. Um, some fish, they just spawn whenever, and it's six months in between, and it's hard to really say why. Um, I never did a very good job of keeping track of how often they spawn, but I did notice that it was like, almost every time I caught them, it was like at 530. Yes. Most clown fish spawn in the afternoon. Uh -huh. um, at, at ORA, for instance, um, they they don't allow anyone, even the people working there, to walk into the fish rooms in the afternoon. They feed in the morning, they feed in the early evening, and nobody goes in there because they don't want to disturb the fish in the afternoon. Now, my fish, I have melanomas that spawn, they spawn 9 a.m. every single time. That's just the way it is. So, um, they will. They'll be, on their own, they'll be on their own cycle and their own timing. And once they get into a pattern, they tend to stay with it unless you do something really disruptive, like move them or add an aggressive fish to the tank or whatever. Now, Daniel uh, is like a, most people who just want to breed fish, they don't want fish in there. So there's, they got the whole place themselves. What size is that? Um, I think Daniel has uh, 75. I'm not certain about that. So they lay a nest of eggs. What do you expect out of it? What happens? Well, it depends on how good you are. Um, if, uh, if you're an experienced breeder, some of them can get 90, 95% of a, of a nest. Yeah. So we're talking two, 300 fish every 12 days. If you're good. ORA, they can do that. Um, if, if you're like me, Sometimes I've gotten 150 out of a nest, and I've gotten zero, or I've gotten one out of a nest. What do you do? Uh, you raise them up. I mean, the, uh, we'll get into all that. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on now. There we go. Okay. So, uh, 
there are three basic strategies that fish have for reproduction. The first are mouth brooders. Uh, bang guys are the ones that most of us know about. There are <coughs> some others, but they're not uh, as well known. There's uh, demersal sp uh, spawners, the ones that lay eggs, the clownfish, the gobies, the blennies. Some fish will lay eggs and then put them in their mouth. That's what a, that's what a uh, jawfish does. Um, so they're, they are technically demersal, even though they hold them in their mouth. The difference between a jawfish and a cardinal fish is that when the jawfish releases them, they're larvae. Uh, and when the, the cardinal fish releases them, they are little tiny miniature post-metamorphosis fish. So jawfish are a lot harder to raise than uh, cardinals. And then the last are the pelagic spawners, the ones that release the eggs and the sperm in the water column and just let them go. There's no parenting whatsoever. Um, the wrasses, tangs, angels, hawkfish, that's, that's, those, uh, that's their strategy. And if you notice, we can raise bang guys pretty easily. We can raise clownfish, some uh, who are better than I, can raise basslets and gobies and blennies. But there are very few people in the world who can raise grasses, tangs, angels, hawkfish. Um, the one notable exception, or the soon to be notable exception, are uh, blue mandarins, which are pelagic spawners. But um, a, a PhD in Florida named Matt Wittenrich developed a methodology for raising those larvae. And he uh, gave that methodology, I don't know if sold it or what have you, to ORA. And so soon, I thought this summer, they were going to be offering those for sale, but I haven't seen them. So that's on the horizon. And I encourage, and they will be eating pellets. I mean, these fish are raised on pellets. So if you like blue mandarins, hold out until you get more RA, because they'll be a heck of a lot easier. Okay. okay, so the life cycle of a marine fish, and this is the same regardless of whether they're mouth brooders, uh, egg layers, or uh, egg releases. They start out as an egg. Uh, for clownfish, it's typically seven to ten days that they're eggs. They hatch and they're larvae. Unfortunately, well, uh, we'll get to that. Larvae um, are very, very simple fish. Uh, they um, they don't have all the finage that they would normally have. They don't have coloration. They're usually clear. Um, depending on the species, some are born with mouths and eyes, and some are not. The egg releasers don't have eyes and mouths, which makes them even more difficult to raise. Um, they get, the larvae then go through a metamorphosis where they change into a little miniature of the adult. Uh, then we have the post-metamorphosis juvenile, juvenile, sub-adult, adult, and finally sex link. The mature adult that can produce eggs, and then we start all over. Okay, so this is what a nest looks like. Um, at least this is what my melanopus um, made the other day. Nice, tight, compact, circular nest. Um, this was actually a small one for them because I'm not feeding them as excessively as I was maybe six months ago. Um, and they are on an every 12 days kit schedule. Yeah. And you get on that nice tight circular nest several times. Yeah. Um, what else are you going to have? Well, you could have an irregular nest where the eggs are over here and over there and over there and over there. And for one thing, it makes them harder to fertilize for the male. And it also makes them uh, harder to guard if they're all over the place. Because you, what you'll find and find out is that when you have them. Okay, if we go to the basement, Not right now, Johnny. Just hold on. You guys can go back. Um, that, that makes it harder to, to protect from other fish. So keeping it compact means a higher percentage are fertilized and viable, and a higher percentage will be able to be uh, protected. I know my chromis, when they spawn, uh -huh. they take a corner of the tank and go all the way up and down, so instead of that tight compact circle, it's pretty much just oh, lining that corner. These are uh, blue chromis? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. How many eggs are in that circle? I've never counted. I know there are people that are so methodical about this that they will take the picture and they will count in each individual one. Hey, John, you can say anal. It's okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another, there's a guy who's on uh, MoFib, I don't know, marinebreeder.org, if you're familiar with that. 
he actually counted the number of defecations of a larval fish within for an hour. Seriously, it's that, on that's there. poop, right? <laughs> yeah, that's poop. Okay. So, uh, he needs <laughs> <of it. laughs> uh, 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 he he was, uh, have a wife, does he? Okay. Uh, he does. He's got a wife and kid now. Uh, he does have a wife. He does with all that cat. <laughs> okay, so I have to go to a website. This is Sanjay uh, Joshi's website. And he has a nice time lapse of a nest, so you can see how it changes in color over time. When they're laid, they're nice and either red or bright orange, and they tend to sort of fade out in orange, and they start to turn black as the little fish develop, and then you can start to see eyes from <coughs> them. And when you start to see, see how they're, they are kind of shiny, silvery eyes now? Uh, that's usually when they're about to hatch. And so rather than going by the, num the number of days that's rather than going by the number of days that, that have passed, it's better to look at the eggs and see how developed they are. Um, because what you're gonna, what most people do is they actually pull the nest. So they take the nest out of uh, the